Stay tuned for the latest in high-tech tackle and game-changing lures for your four-season fishing success. This is your Angling Connection, the pro's choice. Just got a giant. Like I said, they're running big this year. And uh, I don't know how big it is, but it's got to be 24 inches, I'm guessing. Biggest one that I've caught. Alright, guys, we need quit him, but uh, here's what we're talking about monster whitefish. This is a giant. This is the biggest one <laughs> that I've ever caught, I think. We'll have to put a radar on her and see, but it's fun. And then Slido, and then Squirmy. It's a Alright guys, appreciate it. Stick with us. Hey guys, Brad here with the Pro's Choice, your angling connection. So I'm up here on Green Bay and uh, fishing for whitefish. It's a fun species to chase in the winter. Obviously, they're, they're great on the table and uh, they're fun to catch. They're, they're like a lake trout, oh my gosh. They're running big this year. I just caught my biggest, oh, came off, all right. I just caught my biggest and it's about 24 inches. I haven't measured it yet, but uh, just a giant. And uh, like I say, we're running big this year, but I'm doing something a little different than the typical. So, I mean, a lot of times we're using jig and shad wraps and uh, you know, you're pounding the bottle. That's the deal. You're trying to uh, simulate a goby and that's what they're eating. That's their main, main forage. And uh, ultimately, I'm a, I'm a big fan of blade baits, and so I wanted to try a blade bait. So I have a Johnson uh, Thin Fisher, and uh, it's a small blade bait, but it's heavy enough to get down quick, and it's heavy enough that I'm able to pound the bottom and uh, kind of, you know, uh, displace that soot that's on the bottom, uh, looking like a scurrying uh, goby. So. What I'm doing is, oh, there was one, they're just, they're just swarming around. I can just tell, we're about 40 foot of water, but I can tell there's a bunch of them right here. They're just swarming around, they're feeding. They're very active. Uh, but uh, ultimately, you know, it's, it's kind of a rod, line, bait combo for this. So I have a longer rod, it's about 50 inches long, real slow taper. It's good for fighting the fish, but at the same time with the fluorocarbon, I'm able to feel everything. So with the blade bait, you want to feel that vibration. And ultimately, I'm lifting it six inches, roughly, and fast enough just to where I can actually feel that vibration in the tip. And I believe that that vibration is, is calling them in, but uh, more than that, it's about pounding the bottom making sure you're staying in contact with the bottom. I'm letting it fall on slack line and then I'm lifting it on slack line so that it pops off the bottom. So that initial pop is a, is a simulated scurry plus it's creating a little of that soot to move and then same thing with it falling on slack line as it hits the bottom it's creating uh, you know, that soot to uh, cloud up. So that's what we're doing. It's, it's simulating a goby this year, these fish are running big, and, and uh, realistically, it's been probably my best experience with whitefish in probably four years. So it's it's really good. It's fun. They fight like a lake trout. You know, they they flail around a lot. So you need a rod that's got plenty. That's why I like the longer rod with with, with a, a soft taper, something that uh, has a good parabolic bend to it that you can keep those book, those hooks. Uh, embedded in that fish, you know, you're pulling from the depths, right? We're probably 40 foot right now. A lot of times you're in 80 feet or deeper, but uh, 
Anyway, I'm not dealing with a lot of uh, zebra mussels in this hole. So when I feel something, I know that it's more than likely um, a white fish that's swarming around it and I'm touching him. And he's thinking about eating it. He's just, I, I can envision it, him swimming around it, looking at it, you know, uh, trying to figure out if he wants to eat it or not, or how to eat it. They're kind of a methodical species. And uh, anyway, we'll see if we can get hooked up here on uh, camera. But uh, if you haven't already, please subscribe, like, share, help us help you, uh, you know, bring awareness to your angling connection. This is something that uh, is good for all of us. You know, we're all trying to grow in this sport that we're passionate about. You know, we're doing multi-species. We're doing year-round. Um, yeah, feels good. And all across the, the country, too. You know, they're mostly Midwest, but uh, they'll be all over. But uh, the whole key here is, again, angling connection. All of us helping each other grow in the sport. You know, we all share the common bond and, uh, of this. And uh, we all want to get better, so let's just help each other. Obviously, if you're a tournament angler, you're going to be a little more uh, tight lipped. You don't want to give away your secrets, but uh, otherwise, let's, you know, again, let's help each other. Got this handy pincher thing coming in handy for myself here. Black and gold has been is my color that I'm liking here. But uh, show you the fish. They are squirmy and they fight and they're fun and they taste good. So you need to get up here and do this if you haven't done it before. It's a blast. Appreciate you being here. Like, subscribe, share, and uh, let's keep this thing going. Thanks, guys. All right, so the line I'm using is a uh, Seaguar, six pound fluorocarbon. Typically when it's this cold out, you don't want fluorocarbon, you want mono and braid, you know, but uh, this rod is so soft and I want to be able to have contact and feel all of what's going on in 40 foot of water with this blade bait that I need a line that I can feel everything. And I want something that's that's uh, invisible too. I mean, these fish are super skittish, you know. Um, for the most part, it's a very finesse and a very specific cadence, but uh, sometimes they eat good. Sometimes they just cooperate and, uh, and it's fun. But uh, again, what's working for me today is the blade bait. Feels like God's uh, not swimming properly. So let's take a look at it, make sure it's not fouled up. Because blade baits do foul, and if they do, they're not going to flop right. And yes, as you can see, it's all twisted, spinning, and fouled. So you can feel that when you have line that gives you that uh, ability to feel all that. So it's important, otherwise you waste a lot of time jigging a cloppy, ugly, non-vibrating blade bait. So, again, it's just matching the components, putting it all together uh, to have success. That's why you need different different rods for different scenarios, different reels, different line, everything makes a difference. 
So, let's see if we can get a little hooked up here. Slack line on the bottom. Decent lift, but again, if you lift on the slack line until that line becomes taut to where it's making contact with the bait, it's not moving, right? So when you are on a slack line and then you lift up and you actually make contact direct with the bait, it makes it pop, right? So that popping along with a six inch stroke for vibration and then falling on slack line to create uh, you know, disturbance on that bottom simulating that, uh, that goby screening off. Works. There's a lot of things that work uh, for these white fish. Swim baits, jigs, flies, spoons, Jig and wrap, jig and shad wrap. Yeah, well, you guys need to get up here or down here, wherever you're from, and do this. Or get on your any any body of water that has white fish. They're a ball to catch, and and again, they taste good, and they're the most healthy fish you can eat in fresh water. So, thanks for sticking with us. See if we can get one going here. So I'm curious, what is your favorite line, rod, reel, bait combo for whitefish? And uh, and where do you fish for them? I'm curious. Comment below what, uh, where do you fish for them? And how do you fish for them? Very curious to know, uh, you know, what works where you are. So, let us know. Help give some tips to the others. Maybe you're somewhere else that uh, has these guys and uh, you can help somebody else with what works there because obviously gobies are not every place that whitefish are, right? So. That means that uh, if their forage changes, then uh, the tactic in your bait changes completely. So, curious to hear hear about that. So it feels good. I don't know. <laughs> Might be foul hooked. Maybe because he just realized that he's hooked and he's fighting like he's big. So he's either big or he's foul hooked. But we'll find out. Let's see. Hopefully it's a big one. Uh, felt head shakes like it was a big one. Not a giant, but a spunky one. And uh, again, gonna eat good. It's a good year and you wanna get out. Right now, I can see the phone is shaking because we got 25 mile an hour winds and 40 mile an hour gusts. Typically, I want to be out hole hopping, but I did that for a while, and the wind is just blowing the hole closed so quickly that I just decided to get in the shack. So, got in here, and uh, I'm warm and cozy, and as it turns out, the fish are cooperating. So, win win, ding ding. So, you'll have a blast. See what we got. I already got a tank in there that's probably 24 inches, I'm guessing. You get 19 inch size whitefish, and that's, uh, that's a big one, you know what I mean? And that's fun. And they, uh, they fight and they eat good. So, meaning they taste good for us to eat them, right? <laughs> Let's see what we got. These handy little uh, tweezers for 
plucking these dudes out of the hole. This is, uh, it's down a little ways, so sometimes it can be tricky. I see color. What do we got? Sometimes the little ones, the ones that feel a little bit big, sometimes the big ones feel a little, so you know. It's like they don't even know where to look sometimes. There you yeah. go. Very close. Yep, there's color. Ooh, dark colors. That's what you think. It's a good one. Say 18, something like that. 